Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nairi, also known as Wedding Fashion Expert. This week we are talking about blushers. What is a blusher? Should you wear a blusher? And the things to consider when picking out your blusher. Before we dive into this week's topic, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, drop me a comment below, let me know if there's a particular video, topic, anything you'd like me to create for you, I am here for you, guiding you along the way leading up to your special day. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. I am so honored that you have found me. I am, of course, a wedding fashion expert, stylist, buyer, wear many different hats here at Lavella Bridal located in Los Angeles, California. For daily content, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Lavella Bridal, at Lavella Plus, and at Wedding Fashion Expert. As you can see, I am here in Lavella wearing an Inesti Santo gown. I wanted to show you all the different things to consider for a blusher. This is something that brides ask all the time. What is a blusher? Is it connected to the veil? All of that. So to break down what a blusher is, a blusher is a piece of tulle. So just like this, I'm wearing the veil. This is tulle, that's the fabric name. A blusher comes in front of your face and covers your face. Naturally, as you know, it's a very traditional bridal moment to have the blusher cover your face. So I wanted to start off with a veil that has a satin trim intentionally. The blusher is not attached to it. Of course, you could have it attached to the comb. I'm going to show you why I don't recommend the blusher being attached, but there is also one scenario in which I do love a blusher attached moment, which I will also show you as well. Without further ado, let's get the blusher on. This is our traditional blusher that we have here at Lavella. We've had this designed specifically for our store. We we have strategized the perfect amount of gather with the metal comb and the link. So the way that this would go in, I have my veil on and like I mentioned before, I love them to be separate and I'm going to explain why in a moment. You slip it right underneath the comb of the veil that I have in and I have the bouquet because we have it at a link that hits you right kind of like at the belly section. And the reason for that is we want this to lay over your bouquet and you can spread out the gather beautifully. The perfect place to hold your bouquet is think that your, your bouquet is so heavy, you're going to rest your forearm on your hip bone. That's the perfect placement. And then you just have someone fan this out. As you can see, the blusher definitely does block the view of you through photo and video. You're seeing it on video right now. My recommendation for a blusher is that you walk down the aisle with it and then whoever is giving you away flips the blusher back and then you have added volume and of course you have to smooth it out and make it look really, really gorgeous like so. We can practice if you're in store. That being said, I recommend walking down the aisle because it is such a dramatic moment to have your face covered. And then you flip it back as whoever is walking you down the aisle gives you away. So the rest of your ceremony, you have that time without anything blocking your face for photo and video. And it's just a little more intimate when it's not blocking everything. I know that many of you are thinking, well, your veil has a trim. Why does your blusher not have a trim? That is intentional. If you put a trim on the blusher, it then leaves a line all the way throughout. And I'm gonna put one on just so that you can see what that would look like. But it essentially is going to create a line where this has a very invisible look to it and very smooth and clean versus having an interruption at the bottom of your blusher. The other reason why I love having them separate is because you could enter in to your reception with your blusher on just by itself which is a really cute little moment for you to enter in to your reception with. 
That's why I like to have them separate. I'm going to put on one other veil that is the only exception to my separate blusher rule. And essentially, if you want me to convince you to wear a blusher, it's just a dramatic moment for photos, and it gives you the opportunity to have a little moment after your ceremony. I have a previous video on how to pick your veil, and you will learn in that video that I always recommend a really long veil for particular reasons. I will link that video for you below. I'm going to go grab the next veil blusher combo. Okay, so here is a short veil, shorter veil with a trim. You can see in the reflection in the back how short it is and it does create an interruption, which is why I recommend the long. This is the only one I had as an example though to show you. So this is how the blusher would go on top of it, right? But I wanted to quick flip this over. It's going to be too long to use as a blusher, but I just wanted you to see what it would look like to have that trim. So if it were a shorter bl blusher around there, now you're seeing that line that goes throughout, and I don't recommend that. That is why I highly, highly, highly recommend a raw edge, nothing on it, no matter the design trim of your veil. If it's lace, if it's crystal, it doesn't matter. Always opt for the raw edge, simple blusher, and then you could flip it back and have that really cute moment. Now I'm going to get on my exception to the rule when it comes to your blusher being on a separate comb. Here we are with a veil combination that has the blusher attached. This is the only time I really love an attached blusher and veil because it just has a beautiful flow and makes sense. If you also watched Sophia Ritchie get married, she had a veil that was the same exact cut and shape of this. She just had sparkle throughout it. So this one's just completely plain. But notice this is all one piece of tool. It is completely connected. There is no gather and it looks as if this tool is just floating on top of my head. And this is the one exception to my rule of having your blusher be a separate component. It's just such an effortless, connected moment, and it's so dramatic for photos, it's a no-brainer. So the only drawback for a veil like this, you wouldn't have the option to wear the blusher back and enter your reception with the veil on. So it's really up to you if you like the look of this and you don't care about entering into your reception with or without a veil on, totally cool, then I would opt for this. But also I like the separate components because if you decide not to do the blusher and you say mm, at the last minute it just doesn't feel like me I don't want to do it but it's always great to have it because even though sometimes when you're trying things on and you're getting ready for the wedding and you're trying all this stuff on sometimes brides will tell me it doesn't feel like me it feels a little costume like or it feels super traditional or whatever is going through your mind the one thing I always hear back from brides who did not wear a veil is that they looked back on photos and they felt like something was missing. So the veil and the blusher is truly a moment to elevate that look. It's the icing on the cake, completes the look, really makes you look and feel like a bride and translates so beautifully in your photo and videos which are there to last you a lifetime. If you do opt to do this connected route for ceremony that I just showed you, you could purchase the blusher separately and have that readily available for you for your reception if you do choose to wear it. So no matter which way you go, you have options. You can do all of them. They're all phenomenal options. It's just whatever makes you feel beautiful and excited to walk down that aisle in. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned all the different things and my personal recommendations when it comes to wearing a blusher. I am a huge fan of you walking down the aisle with that blusher forward and definitely flip it back. Do not do your entire ceremony with it and that's only because of the photos. I don't like that you can't see your face and I want you to really shine through the photo in the video. For more videos and tips like these, be sure to tune in every Wednesday, 8 a.m. Pacific Center Time and I will see you in next week's video.